Hey guys, today I'm gonna to talk to you about a product that I uh, reached out and got on the market. It is a Blink key box. Essentially, it is an output expander via CAN. Uh, it does require setup and configuration, which will make it a little challenging for those that don't understand CAN. Um, I'm gonna be offering them available on the market to already programmed and set up for various systems. Um, so I'm gonna have that uh, capable here soon. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about this. Essentially, it is 11, 10 amp outputs. Uh, it's uh, it's got a Radsock connector on it as well. It's um, IP67 rated. It's 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 really a solid slave device, as I would like to call it, that can work uh, on many systems uh, for dashes and, and additional and you know in addition to a PDM uh, if you needed some extra outputs. Um, the price is pretty competitive comparatively speaking. It doesn't have current monitoring. Uh, capabilities so you don't know how much current you're using on each output it'll tell you when your fuses are blown so there's that and um, outside of that it's just realistically it's an output expander and we're going to talk about it in this video so i'll start with the case and the information supplied by the case first we have our can open slave uh, module the software version is 1.19 uh, it is a 12 volt version they do have a 24 volt version if you are dealing with industrial controls uh, supply voltage is 9 to 16 volts that it operates at. Standby current's net less than 30 milliamps. Your contact uh, amperage is capable of 10 amps on 11 of the 13 channels. It does not have a termination resistor mounted. And it is a uh, negative 40, 85 degrees Celsius, as well as IP rating of IP67. I've already pulled the header off of the Kinch case. There is two tabs on each side one and two and then if we look closely i might be able to get them pictured three and four i've already removed those so i can make this video a little bit easier to see and then we see our insides the red fuses are your 11 10 amp high side outputs we do have two two amp low side outputs that are uh driven by mosfets that could be pwm'd although the pwming capabilities are a little bit more challenging uh, to it, I, I'm not going to go into discussion about the PWM options for sending messages via CAN open to do that. Uh, it's a little bit outside the scope of this video, but it is capable of doing that if you need it. Um, and then if you need to replace a fuse, by any means you can just pull a fuse out, put a new fuse in, you're good to go. Slide it into the box, seal her up. It is, it is a tight fit. Very tight fit. You'll hear the two tabs and you're good to go. Outside we have a Radsock connector as well as our Kinch 18 uh, pin connection, which we will be populating and doing some testing. So here I have on the left hand screen, I have the Motec Dash Manager. Uh, I've already got it configured and set up. Uh, there's only essentially a handful of things that we need. Uh, we're using the counters. So I'm using it up and down counters, preserving the channels. All the counters are exactly the same. It's just looking at the keypad button and creating a zero or one based on the instance of it. Um, it's just a way to manage the keypad buttons. And then from there as well, I'm sending some messages. I have keypad buttons coming in. That's how we're creating our counters. Uh, if we have, an, if we have a fault, it'll state a fault message here. Um, we can put that to put an alarm on the dash if we'd like. We can ignore it. We can just log it, whatever the case may need to be. Um, we have our output requests, which is basically the counters uh, for, for each individual. I have 10 outputs here uh, to observe. And then we have a heartbeat message. And the heartbeat message basically prevents the uh, box, if it does not see that message for right now, it's at 2.2 seconds. I, you know, I, I turn everything, it turns everything off. The box has to be powered down and then brought back up before the conditions will operate. I did notice that when I am reprogramming the actual dash, since the dash manager stops all communications, it does go into that state. So it is something that I have to be, uh, I have to understand when I'm reprogramming devices on this. If I'm utilizing the outputs for from this blink box, I need to be aware of that case that the watchdog timer currently is set lower than it takes to reprogram the dash not the end of the world it's just something you got to think about um so here i'll uh i'll start pressing buttons and we'll go into the monitor channels here for just a second uh function or online monitor channel all right i'm gonna scoot that there this over here see all the states 
So yeah, when I press a button, we will see. So I'm gonna use keypad button one. We're on, off, on, off. And then on our counters, on, off, and, you know, while you press the button. So I have each individual state set up. So you can hear the relays click a little bit. I don't know if it'll catch it in the video, but you got my left headlamp or, you know, right if you're in the car. Um, then I have high beams, turn signals, and then fog lamps. I will disable all of those. And I can turn on the fans as well. And that's the simple scope of operation. So there we have it. 11 10 amp outputs, slave device controlled by some device via CAN that would be the master device. And uh, that's about it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a really solid option. Um, it's, it, it's priced to where it's not in the expensive range. Um, so it's, it's if you're thinking about, you know, if you need a few extra outputs and you just need to control them via a dash or some sort, really, really, really solid option there. Anyways, if you uh, found this video informant, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.